Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? So, the gold standard is wrestling. You know, it's not around for 60 years because, uh, you know, some trial by fire. That I mean, it's a standard that, you know, people know. People, people know that Resolite is the way to go. Okay, how do we get a hold of you? Roberts Wrestling at Outlook.com. Kevin Roberts, Facebook. Roberts Wrestling, Instagram. All right, Barbarian Hour tonight. We have, uh, is this our first Olympic gold medalist, Jared? I believe it is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Coach, you're our first Olympic gold medalist, Coach Monday. Uh, that's that's awesome. awesome. That's awesome, man. I'm excited. Thanks I'm for having me pumped. on. I'm good about being first. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm good at that. Right? Well, okay. So hold on. <laughs> you're our first Olympic gold medalist. You're our first yep. Olympic silver medalist. You're our first world champ. Well, no, we haven't had Logan Steve on yet. I believe you're also our first world champion. Wow. You're also world silver as well, right? Yep. Yep. World, I mean, Damn. is there anything you haven't won? You were Man, I, Monday I was... all my tournaments. I tell my boys, I tell them all the time. I go, you know, look, my, my season, my career was is full. I, I went to every tournament. I won every tournament from, you know, Tulsa Nationals to state to, to Blissey, you know, all that. I, I hit everything at all the tournaments, man. Amazing. All. You've, you've I I literally won Midlands. at one point. Everything you have literally won every single tournament. Now you didn't win every tournament every time, but you literally won yeah. every tournament that you ever entered into at least one time. That's right. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. So, so I, okay. Right. So I'm gonna finish introducing you because there's more. There's more because you won the Pan Ams. You won the Pan Am Games. Yep. yep. You have won the World Cup. You have won Tbilisi. Yep. Which what did Tbilisi turn into? Tbilisi now is Uregan, I think. Uregan, right? It's in their national tournament. Okay, but it's still yeah. tough as yeah. nails, like it was. Yeah, because they're all there. But you know, it's, it's different now, just because you know with the, the breakup of the of Soviet Union. I mean, they got all these different you know countries that they can wrestle for. When I wrestled, it was just trying to make the Russian team. So they're all piled in trying to make that Russian team. You know, so that was before the Soviet Union broke up, and so it was it was. Incredibly, they had no other options, kind of like us. <laughs> you know? But you were beating their two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. eight, which they're yeah. that deep. And I don't yes. think a lot of you know Americans yes. understand that aren't international wrestling fans. Because I went to the Russian Nationals in 2009 and covered it for Florida right. Wrestling, and the depth of it was incredible. Like Besik Kudakov, it was when it was the periods, yeah. and Ahmed Chikayev was like 16 years old. Mm -hmm. Ahmed Chikayev beat Besik Kudakov in a period. Really? And everyone's like, who's this guy? He's 16. I can't believe yeah. he just beat Kudakov. And then Kudakov stole his lunch the next two periods and kicked the tire. <laughs> right, right, right. But, right. but I don't think a lot of people understand that depth. They really don't understand that depth. Uh, the guy who beat Kale for bronze in 2011, uh, yeah. Albert Sritov, he was actually a bronze medalist in Snyder's weight in Rio. Really? He, he was runner up at 84 kilos. Mm -hmm. that, and that guy is massive. So like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I just couldn't believe the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys. That was what really got to me. You had to yeah. beat all those guys to win Tbilisi. And I don't think people understand that. Yeah. Yeah. That was a tough tour, man. And it's back, back in the eighties, you know, late eighties where, you know, the conditions were, were horrid. I mean, they were, you couldn't eat after six o'clock in the evening. So you really had to bring your own um, food pretty much, you know, the water, you couldn't tr quite trust the water. Um, you know, and we, and we did three dual meets on the tour also. So it was like, a, we could wrestle. I wrestled that my the year I won it, I was 11 and 0. So I won three, three of the duels, won all three duels. And then I, you know, won the tournament. Right. And so I had eight matches in the tournament. So it was, a, I was 11 and 0 on that tour. You had eight. eight. So wait a minute. How many guys were in the bracket at Tbilisi then? You know, it was a, it was a pretty big bracket. You know, I had eight matches. I mean, I, I had eight matches. It had to be to 100. It had to be 100 plus. It was, uh, it was 60, maybe 70, 70. It was, it was a big open tournament. That's, it was, that's why, you know, yeah, it was, it was a big tournament. All those guys were there, man. They're trying to win. I went through, you know, probably 
Yeah, I wrestled Mega Man off. I read wrestled Gaji Khan off. Zahuda. Zahuda. So, I mean, I wrestled, man, I wrestled all the top guys. The only one that was, wasn't there, but Ryan wasn't there. He wasn't, he wasn't in the tournament. He didn't wrestle. He was there. I saw him, but he wasn't in the tournament. Yeah, wow. so it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a beast of a tournament, man. It really was. It really was. After I won that, man, I knew, I knew I could win. I knew I could win, you know, the Olympic Games. But after I won that tournament, I'm like, okay, I, I have arrived. I've, I've, was, I've, was, I've, was I've for Fadzayev down? Was Fadzayev down a weight then? Yeah, he was wrestling. Yeah, he was a 68 kilo then. Yeah, he was, okay. he was, yeah. He you was beat Arsene Fadzayev. You beat him. You, I saw you blast him a couple times. Yeah. And he couldn't match your explosiveness. It was amazing. And that and yeah, he was in 89. That's, that's, he came up to 89. He came up to my weight class in 89. World Championships. That was after he won Olympic Games in 88. And he uh, he came up, right? And people don't know. He beat he beat Varif to make the team. And that's why he went up. And they were just trying to – He you know, he, he figured you know, he hadn't lost. And that was his first international loss. He had never lost, right? And so I think he was just kind of tired of cutting weight and – Thought he could, he could, um, think he went up, so he came up. Gave him his first international loss. That's kind of a big deal. Arson Fadzai yeah. never lost. Yeah. Kenny Monday, yeah, takes steals his lunch from him. I yeah. mean, I mean, you, but he couldn't match the the uh, like, like you were changing levels and you got blasted. Mm-hmm. Was that the match? Is that the same match? That was yeah, it was the finals of eighty of eighty nine. And um, I mean, he was—he's a strong dude. He's—he's he's tough, man. He's, he's strong. I wish I could have got to wrestle him again. He went back down after '89, but I really wanted to wrestle him again because I really didn't—I never really got—I I never really got to his legs. I wanted to get to his legs, right? I mean, I, I kind of did a reshot and doubled him, but you know, I thought I could could have got to a couple single legs on him too. But I wanted to wrestle him again just so people didn't think it was a fluke. Yeah. You did double like him. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> you did double like him now. I, yeah, yeah, I did. I mean, yeah. that guy's a freak. I yeah, watched him. Good, I watched, hard out of someone. Yeah, I watched it too, man. He, I mean, he beat Mester. I mean, Mester was our toughest guy, you know, for the longest time until, you know, Nate beat him in the, in the trials. But, I mean, Mester was tough, man. I wrestled, I wrestled Mester a few times. That dude was tough, man. He was tough to, tough to deal with, you know. And he, he, beat, he beat Mester pretty soundly. And then he beat Nate pretty soundly. Um, so I was like, man, this, this dude must be really good. You know, and then I didn't even know, check this out. I didn't, I didn't even know he was in my weight class until, you know, maybe a, a couple hours before weigh-ins in 89 world championship. So I, I didn't, didn't plan on him. Didn't, game plan, right? You know, I mean, I watched him just because of who he is. And I've watched his matches and kind of studied him a little bit, but I didn't, I didn't plan for him to be in the weight class. And, he, and then Leroy Smith, which one, he was one of the, the USA coaches came up and said, Hey, you know, but I was up to, up to, uh, up at 74 kilo. I'm like, what? So, so what? Right. So yeah, it caught me off guard, man. I'm like, oh man, he's he's too small. That was my first thought that he was gonna be too small, just because at that point, man, I I'd really kind of filled out into the weight class and, and the 68 kilo guys couldn't deal with me like in USA. I mean, I, I was I was pretty much handling those guys, like from um Nate, I was I was getting the best of Nate. I was beating Jur, beating Mesker. I was beating all those guys pretty, pretty handily. Uh, so I'm thinking he couldn't, couldn't deal with me until he went through like a few of the first rounds. He went through those guys like he was going through these 60 kilo guys. I'm like, yeah, this dude must be strong. He must be strong. So it really kind of gave me a different, a different mindset. I'm like, shit. I kind of got a little. I was concerned. I wasn't worried. I was still confident. But then he wrestled the the Mongolian in the semis, and the Mongolian was was ahead of it. Most of the match, so he was really struggling with the Mongolian. And Mongolian was Mongolian was tough, man. I mean, I've wrestled him. I wrestled Mongolian probably three times, and uh, each each time was it was you know about three or four points. You know, three three or four points. You know, one time I think about beating him by two points. I, I always struggled with him. It was tough. So the Mongolian almost. I mean, he really almost got him. And then I think Fazak took him down with like thirty seconds left or whatever to win the match. I'm like, I said. So then I was like, okay, he bleeds. <laughs> this dude bleeds. That's all you needed to see, right? That right? gave you a shot in the arm, huh? That gave you a little bit of exactly. confidence. Exactly. Like okay. I was like, okay, this guy, he's not, he's not, he's not, uh, he's not unbeatable. Well, yeah. it's just like Sajulayev, right? Like he's the, he is the 1980s version of Sajulayev. And then you would have like your Regan being there and uh, 
uh, uh, Regan would be like their seventies version, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they've had, you know, Budweiser Saitiev, who you were yep. in the Olympics with the 96, yep. Yep. you know, he's their, he's their two thousands guy. And then obviously yep. they got Patirov, but now their guy is, is, you know, yeah, he's the, pound the for pound. Yeah, he's pound for, he's pound. pound for pound. Right. Absolutely. But we know he bleeds too. Cause Schneider beat him in the, the 2017 file. He, he beats Sajulai. We won the he team. Hadn't bled in a while. He, hadn't, he hadn't bled in a while though. Shit. Yeah. It's crazy he though. He hadn't bled in a while. He hadn't yeah. And he never. Those and, and those guys, you know, I think sometimes they get, you know, I think Satya was the same way. They get, they get overconfident thinking they're untouchable. Same thing happened to Satya when, when Slade beat him, you know, he came off, he was coming off of what? Three world titles. He won 80, what he won? He won, he won 95. 96, 97, 90, what he had like three or four in a row before 2000. And, um, and so he was really kind of, he was like thinking he was untouchable. And I don't think he trained very hard. He was, he was making a lot of money at that point. I think he went in thinking that he didn't have any competition and, and uh, you know, and, and Slay surprised him. Well, he had a double leg. They, they, here's what I've noticed, Coach Monday. You when, can tell me, you can tell me yes or no. Yeah. When we attack them, if we can pick them up off the mat, if you and I know it's easier said than done, mm -hmm. but when you can get both of their knees together or pick them up and not be in a hip to hip or a seatbelt situation, you're usually gonna if if you get in and you can pick those guys up and, right. and get to both legs, you can seat, beat yeah. those guys. Is that an honest assessment of what I'm what I think is a good way to beat those guys? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, that's that's one of the things that that. Uh, would, would, you know, you definitely would focus on, you know, get them off their feet. And that's for anybody though. But I think sometimes, you know, we're such a high clutch country, you know, we, that's, we teach it, we teach it early. Everyone does it, you know, and they're so good off of it because that's their number one attack, you know, that, that, uh, you know, that outside step high clutch and they hit, they hit it on everybody. Right. And so they, they're so good at defending it. And so when we get in there, we're not good. We're not good at, at, uh, sorry. Yeah. Right. We're not good at, um, at at wrestling out of that position, and they're better just because they're they're, they're freestyle guys and they're better in that position. And so it's like we get there and they beat us, you know. So I mean, I, I didn't shoot high clashes on Russians. You know? I shot singles, doubles, um, and, and kind of did counter attacks on them. And I never hit high clashes on those guys. Um, but that's one of them, and I think the other one is just just outlasting them, you know, just. Uh, because they're not always in the best shape. I mean, they 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 are they're in good shape, you know, in the bigger tournaments, but they're not always in the best condition. And of course, that's what we are known for. And you can see that's that's how Snyder beat him uh, when he beat him, is he just he, you know worn down, you know, worn down, put the weight on him, and uh, he wasn't as quite shape in uh, condition as Snyder, and Snyder got the win. But um, if those guys are in shape, then it's just about you know tactics, you know, tactics, and, and make sure that that. We stay aggressive and, and uh, attacking the legs. And so it's really, you got to beat them at their own game. And you yeah, set the corner real well on uh, us. They set the corner real well on us whenever yeah. they slide our shoulder right outside of their thigh, yep. roll us all around, do a bunch of, you know, do a bunch of things that like our guys don't even know what's hit them. Next thing you know, they're, they're down freestyle. by six, eight points. Yeah, they're wrestling freestyle. They're, they're comfortable there. Huh? That's, that, and, and people talk about it. I mean, that's a big debate about freestyle and folk style wrestling. But again, my assertion is, is it, it holds us back. I mean, it definitely, it, it, it hurts us when it comes down to wrestling freestyle. And those guys, that's all they've ever done is freestyle. That's all they've ever done. And they're always looking, they're always looking for exposure. They're always looking uh, for, uh, you know, big moves and that kind of thing. And, and they, you can tell, I mean, they're, they're good at what they do. We we're, we're bouncing back from folk style to freestyle, folk style to freestyle, folk style to freestyle. And, you know, it's like two different sports. Really, I mean, it took me it honestly. It took me three years to really get to the point to where I was like, "Man, okay, I feel good. I feel good wrestling freestyle. I feel good. I feel, I feel like I, I cracked the code against them." You know, and it took me a while to really kind of get all the the folk style habits and, and all those things out of me before I was able to really feel very confident, you know, in, in a freestyle match. When did you start wrestling freestyle? I mean, what when did you start, or when do you think the optimal age is? Yeah, I, I started wrestling freestyle, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I think okay. probably the fourth grade. Okay. Um, and I tell the story all the time. I was excited because a coach came up to me when we first started. And he goes, hey, hey, uh, you know, you, you can, you know, you can, don't, don't worry about slamming 
the kid. Like you pick him up and you can you can slam him. I was like, that, right? right, that kind of blew my mind. I'm like, what? I can slam him, right? Because you ever, you know, you slam a kid right in folks style. It's like you are like you're in trouble. Right? Enemy, yeah. in, in enemy number one, right? You're like a criminal. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they look at you like like you stole something. Right? It's, it's like they're ready to take you to jail. And so I'm like, I can slam him. He's like, yeah, you can pick him up and throw him to the back. And so, boy, I couldn't wait to pick a kid up and, and slam him. I just couldn't wait. So, so all I tried to do is get him off their feet and slam him, right? So I was excited about that. But, you know, of course, you know, in our system, we, we have, what, two months to wrestle freestyle? We spend the whole time, you know, wrestling folk style, you know, from November to, to March. And then we get two months to wrestle freestyle. Then we're back at folk style, right? And so it's just really a part-time deal. And so I wrestled freestyle. And I went to junior nationals every year. Uh, in high school, you know, for those two months, and then back to folk style. And I tell you what, in college, I never wrestled freestyle in summer. Never did. I wrestled, I'll take that back. I wrestled after my freshman year in college. I went to junior world trials, you know, in, um, in Nebraska. But that was the only time I wrestled freestyle. The rest of the time, I was just working in the summer and, and, and just wrestling folk style in the summer, working out. We say working out, but I wouldn't go into freestyle tournaments. Didn't go to any trials, anything like that, or even in the U.S. Open. Never did until after I was finished in '84. So, the big thing with you know what you're going to be doing now, you're coming to Ohio. You're moving to Ohio. That's how we yes. make this whole connection, right? You're coming to Ohio, yes. and you're going to September start freestyle training. And you guys will do what will you guys do? How will you compete? What is Expire going to look like with Kenny Monday at the helm? Oh, I'm gonna build a monster. I'm gonna build a monster. No, it's a it's a high school program. It's a high school prep school program. We have it's a boarding school. We have we have we'll have day students in, but we'll have a boarding school program as well, where kids can come in and, and, and board. We got dorms. We got uh, kind of like an apartment complex that that they can uh, they can stay. And um, but it's a ninth grade through twelfth grade program. So it's a high school prep school. Uh, then we also will have. Um, um, Post grad program, PG program, where kids, if they need that gap year, uh, they can stay and they can train uh, for that addition of year, uh, getting ready for college. And so, really, you know, my my goal is just I'm, I'm just in, in pre- preparation of uh, you know trying to get these kids ready for for college and getting ready for for life, man. And so it's really a a neat neat program. It's, I don't think it's been done before um, in the sport of wrestling. The facilities so, are uh, second to yeah, none either. So, yeah. Are you saying about that? Yeah. Zeb and I were up there this winter, right? They're only adding to it, right? They're adding more dorms. They're, you know, they're always building yeah. something new. Yeah. I mean, it's second oh, to yeah. none, right? Oh, it's, it's amazing. When I first, because I had never seen it. I, I, I know USA Wrestling had a camp there one, one, one time. Uh, the, the senior team had a camp there for, for a week or so, but I didn't, I, I didn't know about it. I didn't hear about it. And so, um, and I'll tell you the story how I heard about it, but once I saw that facility, I was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is it blew me away. Because out of all my years, all my travels, I've never seen a facility like that, um, that's so expansive and so big, right? And so I just like, man, I was, I was, really, um, I was really impressed with, with everything they're doing. And then the guy, the new owner, the new owner that bought the facility, um, he's already, he's already um, built I mean, he's already bought um, like 500 acres around the facility. I mean, it's got 750,000 square feet of, of facility. You know, um, the guy, the previous owner, he um, he spent $100 million to build this place. And this kind of, yep, and, and kind of ran out of money and kind of, you know, just kind of ran out of money, I guess. It's kind of really the easiest way to say it. And uh, the, the new owner bought it. And, He's pretty, pretty uh, got a pretty strong portfolio, and so I don't think he's gonna run out of money. He's got, he's got some serious plans as far as where he's going with it, as far as just building the, the boarding school. Um, you know, it offers, it offers. Let me see how many sports it offers: basketball, uh, swimming, track and field, and they, and they think they do soccer. Uh, and now we're gonna add, add wrestling. And um, so yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to to build it and build build a world class program and. And really, because um, then also we we will have uh, you know guys that want to you know train for the Olympic for the Olympic Games and to make world teams. I'll have a program for those guys to come in and train. And, um, so it'll be pretty um, pretty neat deal, pretty neat deal for sure. So so, so people that don't know, ball, was go ahead. What? Mello 
LaMelo Ball was actually yep. on the Spire team. Yep, he was. His senior year. That's senior crazy. Year. I know it, right? Yeah, he was there. Yeah. So this is this is already something that has traction. When you have a guy, who's he with the Hornets? Is that who he plays for now? Yeah, yeah. So so they're from Chino Hills, California. Have yep. you ever met the old man? First off, have you ever met the old man? I have not. <laughs> I want to meet that guy like any I, I want to meet not. that guy and I want to play him in one on one. I want to I want right. you to know that right now. I want to play him in one on one because apparently yeah. he can beat Jordan in one on one is what his big claim to fame is. You know that <laughs> he right? can beat him talking, that's for sure, man. That dude's got a mouth. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's got a mouth on him, dude. But you know, you can't be mad at him because he those those, those guys can play, he got two kids in the NBA. Yeah, and he may get another one. I think he's got a younger kid coming up too, right? No, Lamelo's the baby. The, oh, the middle one's okay. Angelo. God, gotcha. Angelo is, boys, is one that's right? trying to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got three boys, but the youngest gotcha. one is Lamelo. Oh, okay. That was the guy who was at Spire. Right, right, right. And I didn't even know so, that until I started reading up on on Spire. And I tell you, who who brought Spire, who brought the whole build to me is uh, Ray Lewis. Really? You know, football really? player Ray Lewis, Hall of Famer, yes, state champion in Florida nice. in wrestling. Yep. He uh he met the owner because he the owner's from Baltimore. He's a business guy in Baltimore and met Ray through a mutual friend and then um invited Ray to come to come check the place out. And Ray went and checked it out and I think he um he invested a little bit into it and, and so he's like part owner. And um and so when Ray went and saw it, Ray was of course he was blown away. He was like, Oh my goodness, you you, you need to you need to start a wrestling program. Um and they said, really? And they said, yeah, you need to start a wrestling program. And I got just the guy that you need to, to hire, to bring in, to start the program, to run the program. And he, and he, and he told him my name. And, um, and so that's kind of how the ball got started. Right? Ray, Ray called me up and said, hey, Kenny, I got a, I got a deal you, you, I really want you to look at, you know, and just really just tell you, look at this thing. And I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's perfect for you. And, uh, and that was April. That was, right? Matter of fact, it was, it was the day before the Olympic trials in, in Dallas in Fort Worth. Day before, I got a text from, from Ray telling me about Spy, right? And then so um, from that t- point on, we just started talking, talking to the owners, talking to the program directors, and and um, we just kind of kept talking and uh, started negotiating. So how far are you and Ray go back then? Like how how's that? You know, when that's you, a, that's that a, yeah. We go back, man. We go back to uh, I met Ray. In, 2013, it's a funny story because I was, I was when I was coaching the Black Zillions, coaching the MA team in Florida, right? And so it was a day after practice. It was on a Tuesday afternoon. We just had practice and uh, it was a beautiful day. I went and I was taking my car to this car wash. And I always go to this car wash in Boca Raton, right? Our gym is in Boca. And the car wash is like two blocks from our from our gym. And so I'm, I'm going to the car wash, went to the car wash. So I, I turned my car in, right? And, uh, and so, you know, you could turn your car into people and uh, they check you in. And I saw a, a white Rolls Royce come through, right? I'm like, wow, that's a, that's a beautiful car, man. I wonder who this is. But you know, in Florida, you see them all the time. You see all these, these fancy cars all the time, right? So I didn't really think too much about it. So I turn my car and I come out and Ray Lewis was sitting at the table, right? Just like outside, waiting, waiting, waiting on his car. So it was his Rolls Royce. And... Um, and I saw him, he didn't see me, he had his head down, he was on his phone or something. I was telling myself, I'm like, man, that's great. And I was thinking, I kind of kind of debating whether I should go talk to him. I said, I should forget it, now I'm going to talk to this dude, right? <laughs> so I went, I said, hey, Ray, what's up, man? It's Kenny Monday, Kenny Monday, nice to meet you, man, I'm a big fan. And, um, and uh, he looked up at me, he goes, he said, Kenny Monday? The wrestler Kenny Monday? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, man, I know you. He goes, man, you're my boy. You, you, I, you're my hero, dude. I, I've been watching you since high school. He goes, he goes. Uh, my coach was showing me your videotapes and and trying to get me to wrestle like you. And, and he called you. And I remember, check this out. I remember there was a 19, 1990 when I was getting ready for the night to Olympic trials, right? And um, and so I got a call from this coach from Florida, and he was telling me about this kid he had on his high school team. He goes, this kid. He's, a, he's just a phenomenal, phenomenal athlete, man. He's a, he's a great football player. He's going to play football in college, but, but I think he can be a state champ. I think he can be a state champ. He said, I've been showing him your videotape, and he was like, hey, do you think you can come out and, and, and just kind of work with this kid and work with him a little bit? You know, he might be able to do both sports in college. 
And uh, I was like, yeah, I said, um, I said, man, I've been training really hard. I really can't afford to, to leave. I got a, I got a trials coming up, so I really got to stay here and train. And um, he said, okay, okay. He said, oh, well, if you ever can get out, man, you know, come out and see us. And he was talking about Ray Lewis. He was talking about Ray Lewis, right? So awesome. And uh, I know, right? And so Ray, Ray told me the story. He told me the story. I'm like, man, that's crazy. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just kind of stayed in touch from that point on. And check this out. So after we, we met that day, he goes, so where, where's your gym at? I go, well, it's two blocks down. I gave him, gave him the address. He said, man, I miss wrestling. He had already retired from football, right? And he goes, uh, he said, man, I miss it. I'm going to come. I'm going to come start working out. I said, well, come, come on to the gym. Come to the gym. So that next week, I think it was on the next Tuesday, Ray Lewis showed up. <laughs> he showed up at the gym. Everybody was like, yeah, it was Ray, it was Ray. And he brought his shoes. He brought his no wrestling way. shoes. <laughs> yep. Dude brought his wrestling shoes. So we're just kind of talking. And uh, I was like, hey, uh, he goes, uh, Monday, let's, let's, uh, let's roll around. Let's go, let's go a few takedowns. <laughs> so I was like, all right, Ray, all right. So we, we get on the mat. We start rolling around and, you know, kind of drilling a little bit. Then all of a sudden we start going live. He was trying to take me down. Dude was trying to get me. He was trying to get me. <laughs> he wanted to be. He, he was trying to, to get me, dude. And uh, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't let him get me. Though. I wouldn't let him get a takedown. I, I never let him get a takedown. But uh, but I but he had some skills. I knew he had some skills, right? I knew he had skills. Oh, for sure. And, uh, yeah. So it was it was fun. So we from that point we just kind of stayed in touch from that point the whole time. Yeah, we just kind of kept talking. Yeah. So does he roll up to if, if you periodically see him? You know, it's like. A lot of these things like, hey, Coach Monday's got an in with Ray Lewis. We can have him at Beat the Streets. Is it like that? Is it something where you can get him to come to events if you want him at an event? Would he, yeah, would he yeah. He went to, or something like he that? Went to beat, he was at one of the Beat the Streets. I'm not forget, I forget which one it was. I think it may have been two, uh, maybe 215. He, uh, okay. he, came to, he came to one of the Beat the Streets. Yeah, we, we talk. Yeah, we don't like, we haven't like hung out, you know, different different places. But we, I, can, I got his number. I can call him right now and say, hey, Ray, what's up? That's cool. So, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, and he hits me every once in a while. He's he's really pumped about this fire thing. I mean, he was so, I mean, he was so you know Ray. He's so motivating when you hear him talk. He talked to me about an hour, you know, about this fire deal. He goes, "Kitty, I think this is going to be your legacy. I think we can build something special. You know, I think it's we can you know, get these kids going." He was he's really he's really passionate about working with kids, man. So I'm really I'm excited to to get to work with him. He's going to come out. He's going to come out to fire. He's going to come in and he'll come in from time to time and work with the kids and so. You know, I'm, I'm excited about it. So when you talk about that, you know, those things, you know, you're going to Spire, you know, you talk about you're at the Black Zillions, you know, you're in Chapel Hill. Yeah. You know, you've made moves to do some, yep. some massive coaching jobs, whether it be freestyle yep. clubs, whether it be MMA gyms. When you move, do you keep, is there a home base for the Mondays? Is Oklahoma home base <laughs> for the Mondays? Where do the Mondays have home base? I know you probably got a house that you keep. What do you do? Do you just move? Do you move? What do you do? That's that's a, that's an interesting question. You know, my wife is probably getting tired of me moving. We move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we yeah we move. We pick up. Yeah, but I, we're from Tulsa. My wife and I are both from Tulsa. We got family still in Tulsa, and so Tulsa is really our home base. Um, you know, my dad's still there. Her parents, her, her um, her um. Sister still in, and cousins are still in, tech, in uh, Tulsa, so that's kind of our home base. We're, we're, we went to high school together, my wife and I. You know, we uh, we didn't date in high school, but we went to went to high school together. So we've been knowing each other for a long time. So, but that's our base, um, I should say. But then we, we we pick up and move, man. It's like we get ready to pick up Chapel Hill. We've been at Chapel Hill for five years, so we got a lot of, a lot of moving to do. Uh, but it's been great, man. It's been great here at Chapel Hill, UNC, man. We we've done some phenomenal things with the program and. I love Colvin Scott, man. So it's funny. That was really a hard conversation to go in and say, hey, man, I'm, I'm thinking about doing this deal. And uh, that was a tough, tough conversation. So, you know, your wife, she is works for Mary Kay. Am I correct? She is a national sales director for Mary Kay Cosmetics. Yep. And she's, uh, you know, that's kind of the highest you can go in the company. And uh, so she gets a you know a, a, a get to drive a free pink Cadillac every every couple of years, and she just drives it till the till the tires fall off, and she goes get, picks up another one. And uh, so she's at that level where she just gets a free car every every couple of years. And so yeah, but she's been in the business for thirty years. And so she's, your uh, wife, when it comes to that, to, you got to be a killer to get to that level. She's a champ. Your wife <laughs> is an absolute killer for Mary Kay. Let's, let's let's don't don't. 
Don't shortchange me here from what because I was reading on the internet and I was like, whoa, oh, oh. <laughs> Kenny's wife is at the level he's at, but with Mary Kay. And I was like, I was, it was amazing. And then I think I follow you on one of the social medias where you guys periodically right. go and shoot upgrades and get some new Cadillac. Yep. Yep. Every, right? every couple of years. Yep. Yeah, That's she's crazy, uh, man. We, we, we like to call ourselves, we, we got this Monica, we, we're Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. And I'm the beauty. She's the beast. <laughs> and she don't mind. She doesn't mind telling me either. She, she does not mind telling me. When, when her eyes open, her mouth starts going. As soon as they're out, we wake up in the morning. <laughs> and as soon as we wake up, I don't, it's just, I guess it's just, it's like automatic. I think she's on a timer or something. But when her eyes open, her mouth started doing this, dude. It just starts to hit. It's right behind you, you know. It just starts it's right behind you. Be careful right now, okay? <laughs> have, have you, hey, have you bought a place yet in Geneva or Madison or? Oh no, dude. We're it's such a process. And every house we moved six times. You know, we started. Oh. We were in, we got married. We we're in Tulsa. I took a job in Texas working with Steve Silver. I don't know if you know Steve. He ran a, a club for ten the years. Furniture. He owns the yeah, largest furniture. furniture. Yeah, yeah outlet well, than like the yeah. southwest yeah yeah he's doing well. we, we, when i first started he had this catalog was 35 pages now it's like 350 pages right so wow. yeah so he's, he's really done well and matter of fact his son that i coached he hired me to coach his son like we had a club team but he had a boy that was luke was uh like 11 at the time and he just was named president of the steve silver company so uh, wow. i'm really proud he went to really blair didn't he didn't he, he went, go to blair no he went to bishop lynch he went to Lynch. One of them went to Blair, though, didn't they? No. They no. all went to Bishop Lynch? I went to Bishop Lynch. Okay. I went to Bishop Lynch. Now, the one, the one uh, young cousin, uh, little Judson Prescott, yeah, he, was, he was Steve's little nephew. Okay. His, his, uh, he was his uh, brother-in-law's son, sister's son. Or his, what is it? His, no, his sister's son's boy. Okay. Little Judson. He went to Wyoming Seminary. Okay. When I left, when I left... Uh, I left there, and that was the second move. I left there and took the RTC job at, at Oklahoma State. And that's when I started coaching Coleman Scott at, uh, under John, okay. with John. Yep. And then from there, we went to Florida. And then from there, we came back to Texas. And then from Texas, we came to Chapel Hill. So we kind of moved around. So Did you say the Florida one? I missed it. You might have chopped it up. Did you say Florida? Yeah. Yep. That's why I went okay. to, to coach the Black Zillions. Moved to Florida. How long were you with the Black Zillions for? And what was about that a year and a half? Like? It was short. It was short lived. <laughs> about a year and a half. Okay. So when yeah. you get, so you, you're, you are arguably one of the most successful American amateur wrestlers in the history of USA wrestling. I mean, what you've done, we talked about, you've won literally everything. What is that like? What's that crossover like from being one of our all time greats in the United States? <laughs> America, who I grew up watching as a kid in Toledo and Savage Hall in person. I went to all the World Cups. It was amazing. It was the best thing right. ever. Um, right. But but what is that? what's that crossover like and what's the respect level like when you get into the MMA world versus the wrestling world? What is that crossover like for a guy like Kenny Monday? Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an easy transition, really. I mean, now, especially now, I think they understand that the importance of wrestling uh, in, the, in, the, in the game, right? And so at first, you know, I think and the first, when it first got big, I think, you know, the, the jujitsu guys were really the, they were the, uh, the dominant force when it came to the ground and you know, wrestling on the ground, you know. But now once the wrestlers have kind of got hit to the jujitsu, now they kind of, they can kind of nullify the jujitsu for the most part, right? And uh, it's an easier transition from wrestling to, to fighting, I think, from jujitsu uh, to fighting. Um, and they're both important, they're both, you know, major, major skill set. But uh, it was pretty easy, man. It was the respect level. Once you, you know, once you, you know, achieve the, you know, you know, the status of Olympic gold medal, said that that crosses over. People understand that, and you know, so I, I never, I was always respected throughout the, you know, throughout the sport. You know, Dana White, when I saw him, he would always come up and talk and that kind of thing. So I was well respected in the game, and I think, I think more than anything too, just the results that we were getting. We had some killers in that team, and we were getting results. I was coaching Eddie Alvarez, uh, Vitor Belfort, Rashad Evans, um, Anthony Johnson, Michael Johnson. Uh, Uzma was there when I, he wasn't even in the UFC when I first went out there. He wasn't in the Gilbert, Gilbert Burns, you know, I coached him. I did a lot of privates with Gilbert um, when I was out there just because he was trying to learn, you know, the wrestling and takedowns and 
you know, how not to get taken down. So he was really good at jujitsu, but the wrestling ways, you know, all those guys want to learn wrestling. So wrestling is, is uh, now I think it's more important. It's important than anything. But I loved it, man. I love the game. I love the sport. You know, I'm a big fan. And uh, who knows? I may may end up going back someday. It's getting big. It's getting big for sure. I mean, it's it's, yeah, it's, it's not slowing it's down. Huge. No, it's not. And I knew that too. I always knew that. You know, back in '98 when I, I fought, I had one fight. I'm one and Z, one and zero. Oh. Right. Still undefeated. Pretty quick, right? It was it one quick? fight, man? Well, it was the second round. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I got it by the second round. But I tell you what, if, if it would have been big like it is now in '92. After that night, two Olympic games, I probably would have, I would have, I would have full time, full time fighting. After ninety two Olympic games, if it was as big as it is now, yeah. I've been trying to get it that belt. Changed quite a bit, pretty quickly. Yeah, it's still it's changing, just, right? Yeah, it's just ever evolving. Still growing, like you said, it's not going back. And I knew, I knew that it wasn't going back the other way. I knew it was just going to be huge. And, and, and wrestling will always be relevant. I mean, the big I, exactly. Will always, and be, I knew, always I knew, be. I knew the wrestlers. I want, I knew once they kind of got a hold of it and started really training. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and 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 being a professional about it, I knew they were going to dominate the game. Right, and that's what they've done. You look at look who the champions are. Right. So, do so you me- think? Do you think the big question I've always had, and you know, it's like you got like a, a guy like a Brian Dolph, who's yeah. who's just a, a killer and a, a choker, a guy who can get yep. guys in front headlocks and just pop yep. their hat off. Yep. You know, like a guy like yourself, who could have just taken everybody down and grounded pounded you know and i mean what we saw what coleman did right but mm-hmm. like a guy like dolph just missed it a guy like you just yeah, missed it. Cage sure. just missed sure. it you know but it, like you guys were just those guys who were the 84 88 92 guys just missed right. it and then exactly. you know coleman was in a in a situation where they took they, they rule changed it they mm-hmm. took the headbutt away from him and that right. was what he was doing he was just taking guys down and yeah. just he could he yeah. could just he could, he oh, could yeah out. absolutely and randy couture randy couture hit it, he was right at the right time he was you know he was a little older but he still hit right at the right time when he came through you know and i coached randy at, at uh, oklahoma state you knew that right yeah he was yeah he was at oklahoma state a couple of years and when he came in i i was kind of his main workout partner and so i really kind of toughened him up i got him ready for the ufc he I lost to the NCAA finals to mark kerr he did he did and i was in his corner and that's I was in crazy because Mark was... Kerr's from Toledo. I'm from Toledo. My brother used to go back and forth with Mark Kerr in high school. Yep. They used to trade my brother Ferd and Mark Kerr used to go back and forth in high school. Yeah. And then Kerr beat Rex Holman in the or yep. yeah, Kerr beat Rex Holman in the semifinals. That's him, he yep. beat Couture in the finals. Yeah. Just but the but those athletes, those guys were different. Those guys were different athletes. And a lot of those bigger UFC, bigger pride guys had never seen Don Fry. Right. You no, know, they'd never right. seen uh, what's Erickson. They'd never, right. they'd never seen big Dan guys Seven. like that that can move. And then Dan Seven. Dan, 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 Dan the Beast, right? Tough. Arizona State, right? Yep. And wrestling was more suited then for, you know, UFC, right? It was more of the mean. Right now it's getting more of the slick and, you know, you still yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, but it was yeah. more, you know. Pound and pound, man. Right. That, you, know, pound. You, you watch the NCAAs back then, it was, you know, yeah. a lot mean it's and brown, brown, digging it out. Brown and, out brown and pound. Ground and pound. Man. So we missed that window with, with some of the top level athletes. We yeah, had, yeah, right? yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and, but you know, I tell people, but but I tell you, I tell people all the time, you really, you really have to have a um, a fighting mentality. And it's, it's it's a different type of mentality. Not every wrestler is gonna be is gonna have that mentality to fight. You know, I don't I didn't think uh, guys like um what's my guy from um Heavyweight from Iowa, lost it from the Michael. See, I just I don't think Michael was a tough guy. I just don't think he it, was, it suited him well. I didn't I didn't think it suited a guy like that, right? And I just didn't think that he was going to make it just because I don't know. Well, he trains he's a top team now. It ain't good for him. yeah. He's a good coach. He's yeah, he's a, a top coach. team. He's, he's a good coach. But I but but certain certain people are not going to be be successful in the game. I didn't I didn't think. Uh, Ben kind of surprised me because he's such a soft-natured guy, right? And and, and I, I didn't think he would do well. He did well in the other other uh, organization, but I didn't think the guys like that would do well. He's such a – it didn't seem like he's a fighter kind of guy, right? But, so a million-dollar question for me to you is I just saw a video on Instagram. You can correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, so, but I might have seen one of your babies training with Usman. I'm just saying <laughs> – 
Am I, am I, I'm not making that up. I'm mean, Usman were training. Am I making that up or is that a true thing? Was Kennedy Monday training with Marty Usman? Did I see that or do my eyes were they deceiving me? Uh, yep, yep. He was out there. He, he, yeah, you saw it. You saw it. He wants to. I think he wants to dip his dip his toes in a little bit, right? And um, you know, I think he was he was around. You know, he, I took I took those guys around when I was at you know, the Black Zillions and took them to practice a few times and they rolled around a little with those guys sometimes. So they know all those guys, right? And then when I went to Texas and coached Johnny Hendricks with the um, team takedown, so they were around those guys. You know, I think he got to roll with, with uh, the Usman back in the day too, right? So he, he knows he, he know those guys. And then he also, he, he knows um, your favor, you know, the guy that um, um, Alex Munoz, I coached Alex Munoz, Munoz in high school. And I started doing privates with him when he was a sophomore in high school and, um, and, and really built him up and, and did a lot of privates with him. He ended up being, you know, third in senior nationals. You know, got a full ride to Pittsburgh, uh, Pitt uh, University. And he, so he went to college and now he's fighting. He's in the UFC fighting with, uh, with the, um, with the uh, favors guys, you know, the female, female alpha why. male. The alpha male, right, right. So I've been out there and I've, I've cornered him in his fights couple of times I cornered him in a couple of UFC fights and I would have been probably still doing a little cornering with him. I just COVID hit and then uh they just kind of threw everything out of whack. So I hadn't been able to get in this corner. But he still wants me to be in this corner. So we'll see. So we've got an incredible saleswoman. We've got a <laughs> Ivy Leaguer. You're right. Got an Olympic gold medalist and now we were you're telling me we we're gonna have a face puncher. Is that I don't know man. I don't know. I I don't I don't know. We'll see. I don't I don't does know. he we'll has he got another year? He has another year if he wants it. He's got another year if he wants it. He's got he's got two years to graduate. I mean, two classes to graduate. And so that's our folks with, with Kennedy is get him graduated. You know, he's got two years. He's got to finish school. You see that? Two classes. Two classes. Two, two classes. Two classes. Two so two hold classes. on, hold on. How he many was, he, kids he, he got, total do you have? Her, How many kids got, total? Three, right? Three kids. You got three kids. A daughter, Sydney, is 27. She works for uh, Penguin Random House in New York. She's a book publisher, so she lives in New York, and uh, she's our firstborn, and then Kennedy, and then, of course, he's a baby boy. Bunch of, bunch of brainiacs over here. <laughs> got a bunch of brainiacs, and this guy wants to go punch faces. I'm, I don't, I don't I, know. I don't know. I think, I, well, we'll see. We'll see what he wants to do. That's we'll amazing. See. I don't know. Is your wife no, an Oklahoma out. State grad? Is she also Oklahoma State no, grad? No, she, she graduated from Tennessee State University. Oh, really? Yep, yeah, yep, yep. Weird. And then... <laughs> Yeah, she's over there. She's over there running. Oh my gosh. It's running. Hey, like, you have, have to have her on. Yeah, know. we got to get her on. I'll be buying some yeah, hair right. before the end yeah. of the show. She got a, well, she got a master's at Boston University, right? So, okay. got a master's in journalism at, and, uh, in, at, at BU. And she's going to be on on TV. And then there's this woman, there's some woman recruited her to do Mary Kay. And uh, she's never looked back. She's working at the Boston Globe. Living in Boston, working at the Boston Globe, and some lady came and talked to her to doing Mary Kay. Sounds like she made so the right and choice. She's never looked back. Yeah, right. So now she's lady, just got to make lady, a bunch of money and get a new Cadillac uh, every other I'll year. You, okay. I'll tell you what, the, that that lady that recruited her is now the number one sales director in the whole company. She's number one in the whole entire company. Well, she knew what she saw. She knew what she saw. Right, yeah, right, she's right. talent. Right. And so she's, she's talent. She's, uh, she's she's Sabrina's good friend and Glory Mayfield Banks. And so that's uh they're 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 buddies. And so trying to get her up to that level, but she's uh you know, she's she's slow dragging. I gotta gotta put some fire under her a little bit. I know it's not your choice. I know it's <laughs> and I know what you want, but what do you want? You want Kennedy to go back for this last year. What, I know you can't speak for him. What do you see happening? Can't next? I can't speak for him. I just, I was just talking to him in Quincy in the, in the, in the kitchen about an hour ago. And, uh, you know, Kennedy, man, he's, he's so talented, right? He's so talented. He's only about, to me, he's only hitting about 60% uh, of his potential. He's got so much potential. If he, if he really wants to go for it and, and wrestle and, and put the work in, he's got so much talent. He can do whatever he wants to do in the sport. I mean, he can make world teams. He can make Olympic teams. I just don't know if that's what he, he wants to do, right? So that's this. I can't, I can't, you know, I can't make that decision for him, right? I, I put him in a, put him in a sport, expose him to the sport. I think it, uh, our goal 
Uh, Sabrina and I go was just to get them to college, to get them to college where you know, our thing was we wanted them to have options on the table when they came down to making a decision on where they wanted to go to school. If you want to be Ivy League, you want to be Oklahoma State, uh, UNC, wherever, we wanted them to have options. And so that's kind of the way we raised them. And, but, um, and like I've always told them, you know, I can't, I can show you every, every, every move in the, in the book, but you got to do the work. Right. And so the work has got to, it's got to be their dream, their journey, their work. And so I can't, uh, I can't make that decision for him. He's got to make that, he got to make his own decision when it comes to that. So we'll see. I don't, I don't, he floats, he, he kind of flirts with it a little bit, but I, I, I think he's, 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 he doesn't want to do school and wrestle. He's so, he's, he's done with school. So he, he will do these two classes. I don't think he wants to do it, be in a classroom again. So that's kind of where his head is. And then Quincy, Quincy has how many years left at Princeton? Quincy's, Quincy's got two years left. You know, he, he came home when COVID hit, right? Cause they didn't have a season. And right. We kind of saw the writing on the wall. So we kind of pulled him out of school and, or didn't let him go to school that year. So he had that gap here. So we just brought him home. And so he was home the whole time. And he'll have two years left at Princeton to- They did let him gap year. Yeah. Yeah. He just okay. came out. They came, yeah. Yeah. He came out of school. Yeah. All those guys. Fred, Freddie Breeding was asking me. Yeah. He's like, hey, what do you think Josh should do? And then he told me what their conditions were going to be. Right. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Once again, I, I'm all right with being corrected. Right. But they were going to keep them in their rooms. They were having sophomore and seniors and freshmen and juniors one semester. Yep. They were going to yep. do that. And then they were going to be in their room all day, taking online classes, and they were going to deliver food to them. Am I wrong? That's right. That's right. That's, 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 that was the, that was the game plan going they in. They, but they didn't know that they, they were, they were clueless. They were just trying to get in where they fit in and they were just trying to, to, to make things work and try to keep those kids in place, keep them together. Cause they got a special group. That's a special group of kids that they have at Princeton. Yeah. I mean, we I'm just really, had airs on. We just had airs yeah, on in the, yeah. within the month. He's a great guy. They, right. Great guy. They got a special group got a special coaching staff. Those guys are doing it right. I love those guys. And so they were just trying to keep those kids together and, um, and not let them separate. Right. right. And, um, yeah, that, and so yeah, that's yeah. kind of what, what the game plan was, but that wasn't working. So we, we brought Quincy home and uh, he was home the whole time, which we, we loved having him home. And I tell you what, he was, he was Jordan Oliver's probably his main workout partner the whole time that's he awesome. was back. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. That was, that was his main workout partner. He, Jordan probably worked out with Quincy more than anybody. While he was home. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. What, a, what an experience for him. Yeah. And, and yeah. obviously a gap year for a lot of these guys is usually an internship or some of them just take the year off. He gets a year of training with, with his brother and, and Jordan Oliver. And yep. wow, what a, yep. what an yep. amazing experience. Yep. yep. A lot of the UNC guys worked out with those guys a lot. And then uh, he also, he did some shadowing with uh, one of the, one of the doctors here at UNC. And so he kind of got to do that a little bit and, and just kind of shadow and, a doctor and kind of keep him, uh, keep him going and keep him, keep him, uh, you know, on that track. So, but he's, he's, did, he did a good job and he, he went back a couple of times to, uh, to New Jersey and get around his, his uh, teammates and did a couple of cards, that kind of thing. And so, um, but yeah, he's, he's ready to go back. Man, I do is so hungry now. He's, he's so hungry to go back and it was so hard for him to watch, watch the national tournament this year. I mean, it was so hard. Cause you know, it shut down. He was, Going to the national tournament, this is kind of this is what broke our hearts. We were what we were about what two weeks from the national tournament when they shut it down. Right. So he was seated. He was seated fourth. Should have been seated third because they had that one kid that won it last this year, uh, Delvecchia. He had beat Delvecchia, and uh, but they they seated him above Quincy at the tournament. So Quincy was seated fourth going into the tournament, but he was, and then then they shut it down. Right. So he was he was right there, and then uh, having a good season. And then Kennedy was going to wrestle too. So that would have been an opportunity for both boys to wrestle at the NCAA tournament. So they missed that. They missed that opportunity to wrestle in the tournament together. So Princeton yeah. was fire. I mean, yeah, they was there. Princeton was right there. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Glory, so, yeah. Glory was right there. Glory would have had a, a dynamite tournament. Yeah, they were. Klodzik. Klodzik, yeah. Oh, yep. man. They yep. had, yes, they had a really good team. Brucky. Brucky, yep. Oh, Yep. They had a really Stephani, good Stephani. So they, yes. yeah, they were gonna be, they were gonna make some noise, man. For yeah, sure. Stephanic. Wow, what a team. Yeah, uh were, coach, where where is your daughter? Where did your daughter go to college? She was she graduated from Howard University. Yep. She went to Howard. Is Howard University. in Georgia? BCU. No, it's in uh DC. 
It's, it's in DC. It's in DC area. Yep. HBCU. Okay. Yeah. So my, okay. my wife went to HBCUs and then and Sydney went to HBCU too. And she was she was accepted to go to NYU. So her decision came down between NYU and, and Howard University. And she chose Howard. Wow. And um, but she graduated high school in three years. <laughs> she, finished, she finished high school in three years. You guys are smart. So she's smart. Yeah, they, they take after their dad, that's for sure. <laughs> Did you see, I wouldn't have my back to her right now. I'm not gonna lie to you. The the things you're saying, I, you got a mirror in front of you. Can you, you got a mirror in front of you? Oh, you just yeah. wait. You just wait. You just wait. You just wait. He's gonna get it. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? I love it. So, Man, so Coach, had, when she does not miss the, the camera, move? dude. Put a camera in her face, and there she goes. I promise you. Hey, when is the big move? Well. Um, we're, we're, we're shooting for September, shooting for September. September. Yep. Yep. We're hopefully we can get, get something done by August, by next month. And, uh, we're, we're looking at houses. Hey, what she was, she was, she's pretty hot at me for about a month and a half. I started talking about Geneva. I started talking about Ohio. She was, uh, she wasn't, she was, she was pretty, pretty hot. Cause it's pretty nice here in Carolina. We love it. I mean, the weather's nice. The climate is nice. The, win the winters are mild. It, the trees are beautiful, and so she was. Uh, she's not excited about moving, and so it took her a while to kind of to bake in a little bit. She's it's really nice it. there right now. Geneva yeah. on the lake is really nice right now. No, they have a bunch of out. wineries we, and cool stuff. No, dude, check this out. We were just there. I took the family. I took the family. I told you we went to the game, but we we took the family to to visit Spire, and then uh, they had a whole freaking itinerary for us so they had we, we we went to the we went on this wine tour into like five different wineries and and so we got to meet some good people and that was really cool i mean we didn't know i didn't i didn't have, had no idea that they it was wine country I had no it's idea wine was, country did you really go to the is. winery did you go to the winery that's an old church that they moved it's called riverside winery it's got this cool pavilion off the back of it they moved this church from 40 miles away they moved it up there it's called really? riverside winery it's geneva on the lake it is incredible it's right down to the road one. from dibonet you probably went to dibonet went, went to dibonet went there, went there Deben, yep. it's it's two or three miles from dibonet on the really? same road it's on river road it is an old church it is cool man it is really? and it's got this pavilion overlooking all yeah. the, the the farm really? it's really neat yeah no it was all we went to a couple of nice ones man we really did and uh, we had to check this out we had this guy which was our, our guy, he was our driver. He was our guy and he's an old wrestler. <laughs> and, right. and he looked like a wrestler too. He looked like, like a big Bruce Baumgartner or somebody, big, big guy. But he was just the most gentle guy, man. He was so good natured. So he was excited to have us, right? He decided to have a wrestler and he'd taken us around. He, he felt so good and he was so pumped about it. He took us around, he knew all the wrestlers and told me you know, about, uh, you know, Lee Kemp was from that area. He's from- Charter, uh, Charter. Charter. Yeah, yeah, he's from that area. So he knew Lee. and. And so now it was cool, man. And then it was a Fourth of July weekend. And then, so then we went down to the lake, Lake Gene you know, Lake Geneva. Mm -hmm. and, it, and man, it was crowded. It was packed. I've never seen anything like it. It's a throwback there, right? Oh yeah, my like goodness, old... it's throwback. cool, man. Geneva yeah. on the lake's cool. Geneva on the lake is right on Lake Erie. Was, yeah, it's really it, nice. It bumps. It bumps in the summer, but but like I'm not ocean, gonna lie man. to your wife. I know she can hear me. The winter is not oh, dude, pleasant. Dude, don't even start. <laughs> Come on, Zeb. <Zander. laughs> Come on, man. Well, I live by it. I'm 45 minutes from just now I'm 45 around, minutes away. Dude. She just now started cooking cook for me again. She didn't <laughs> cook for about a month. <laughs> she was, you know, just now started to cook dinner again. Uh, now you're going to put that back on us. Uh, no, I know, man. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 yeah. It's, it's what it is, what it is, you know, but I think, you know, this is a, to, to me. It's, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, man. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I think what we can build. I think the vision is, is so big uh, for Spire Academy, and uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a neat deal when it's all said and done. I mean, the plans that that, that they have is amazing. Um, I mean, we're going to have he's going he's already building a hotel on property. Uh, he's going to have two hotels. It's going to kind of look Marriott, like an right? eighty room Marriott. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's going to look like a, a Olympic Village. Mm -hmm. So he's going to build crazy. more apartments and student. Um, he's going to build uh, Starbucks. Starbucks. He's going to have um, senior living is in the plans. 
Um, so no, it's gonna be it's gonna be a really neat deal when it's all said and done. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm excited about where we're going. Then the we're building a world class world class wrestling facility, man. It's gonna be um, a facility so where I can I can I can bring in Olympic teams, I can bring in world teams for training camps and and that kind of thing. We can do tournaments, we can do um, you know, we can do cards. And so I'm I'm a pumped I'm pumped about where we're going with, with, with Spire. It's gonna be really it's gonna be really fun. Is the wrestling room going to be up in that mezzanine area then, or where's the where's the wrestling room going to be? At? Well, we we looked at that we looked at that spot. I mean, they, we went in and we kind of looked at that spot. And I, I don't I don't think that's going to going to work just because they they have they have events up there, right? So I didn't want to take that from them. It's kind of hard, area, to, right? Yeah, kind of enclosed. It's kind of hard to do that. And so they got a they got a baseball cage down there. They were we're trying to do something maybe temporarily, but then there's another building. There's another open space on the other side of remember where the weight room is? Mm -hmm. See the weight room? There's an open space on the other side of that weight room. It's like 40,000 square feet. It's huge. So they don't have anything in there right now. So I'm pitching, I'm pitching this, I'm pitching this area. Man, let me have this, this oh, space. God. So let me build a wrestling yeah, facility. There's no shortage of space. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's so crazy. It's insane. Right, right, it's insane. Right, right. Like the the in, how many indoor tracks? Two indoor tracks. You got yep. indoor soccer field. You've yep. got uh, Olympic basketball uh, swimming court. pool. You literally don't have to leave that facility like yeah. a recovery day. It's right. all literally right. No buses, no vans, all right there. You can host events. You're, yep. You won't even, you'll be able to host events in the space he's going to give right. you. Yep. So, yep. so what's Absolutely. the recruiting pitch? Hit me with the recruiting pitch. Like <laughs> I think I just did a little for you, but give me the rec recruiting pitch through Kenny Monday. <laughs> We're, we're, we're building a, a world-class program, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in families from all over the world. And um, you know, it's going to be an opportunity for kids to really live their dream, right? And I love, I love the vision that they have because really, it's all athletes there. It's no, no students, you know. So every student is is an athlete from the other sports. So it's going to be a really cool environment. Um, they have a great program. The guys that, that ran uh, from IMG. A run and run and inspire, you know that uh, IMG program, and, and so those guys are really uh, versed in, in in the academy format, right? And so they're doing some really good things. Got some really good plans. We got plans to have an aviation school. I was just talking to uh, the, the owner Jonathan the other day. He's going to have an aviation school. He's going to teach kids how to fly planes. That's going to be a part of the curriculum. So he's doing that. He's got esports. They got drone program where you teach kids how to do drones and so really it's about it's, it's more than it's more than um getting ready for college man he's really trying to prepare these kids for for life and give them some skills and some things to do that's going to really prepare for their next uh their next uh, uh part in life and so i mean i'm really pumped and really excited about it right just because it's really designed to you know some like schools now like the the, the, the blairs the the wyoming they this they have a lot of protocols and a lot of um doctrine doctrines that they have to kind of get through i remember i was coaching a bishop lynch and and they it's really that catholic schools are really if you're not especially if you're not catholic i mean they really have some some uh, some doctrines that you kind of have to follow along with and it's it's kind of tough for some of those kids that, that aren't catholic right i mean i remember one kid got kicked out of school just for chewing gum he chewed gum um too many times and they they, they were like fighting him. every time he chewed they called him a gum it was like a like a ten dollar fine or something, right? And then it, it kind of kept going up, and they finally kicked him out of school. And um, and so it just it's just it's really designed to to help the the, the student athlete in their sport. And so the, the everyone the, all the the, uh, the the teachers and the the professionals, I mean, they understand you know the rigors of the sport, and so they're there to help help the kids um, be student athletes, be better student athletes. And they have a program that's going to learn how. I mean, to teach the kids how to, to, to place them in college and what they need to do, all the, the core classes they need to have to prepare them for college. And so that's really what it's all about, really trying to. And I love it just because I'm, I'm selling the dream. I've always been one. I, I'm, I'm a dream seller, right? I've lived the dream, the Olympic dream of being the best in the world. And so that's the dream that I'm selling. I want kids that come, they want to come in that are serious about being uh, the best in the world. And, and that's the dream that I'm selling. And I want you to be the best in the world. And it's not, you know, everyone ha doesn't have to come in with, with that kind of dream and, and goals. But if you do, I'm going to give you every opportunity to fulfill that dream. Right. And so I love the staff they have. They have, I mean, it's really just about 
performance. And they have, uh, you know, they got trainers, they've got doctors, they've got, um, you know, guys that are talking about, you know, just your mental, your mental performance. And so it's really set up to, to help the student athletes be the best that they can. And so I'm, I'm excited to be part of it. You uh, looking at any other coaches bringing in, or and uh, obviously starting out will be you. But is there other guys yep, you're looking yep. at anything you're talking? I think about yeah, I got to You know, it's 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 uh it's it's one by one. Man. I got to build this thing from 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 the scratch, from the ground up, and that's another thing I'm excited about. You know, I get to put my my stamp on it, right? It's an open canvas, and so I'm I'm putting my stamp on it. I've, I've worked with a lot of different kids. I worked with guys at Oklahoma State. I worked guys at Bishop Lynch High School. I ran a club, you know, with UNC. So this one is really, um, I can really put my stamp on it and build it, build it kind of the way I want. But yeah, I'll, I'll have coaches as, as the program grows. I would like to have guys that are still competing to come in that, you know, that can still come in and, you know, and, uh, and coach and still compete. Uh, so we'll have, we'll have programs for those guys too. And, and the beauty of it is we've got jobs, you know, I mean, every, every dorm that we have, every dorm that we build, we'll have a, like a, a, so a dorm parent, so to speak you know, that, that will run that dorm. And so we got jobs, we got these guys that will come in and they'll coach, they'll compete, and then they'll have jobs for, for, the, for the guys around the facility. I mean, this place is going to be, uh, it's going to be amazing when it's all said and done. So we'll, we'll have some jobs for you. We'll have some jobs available for sure. Oh, yeah, we're awesome. going to build it. So, so you got, you got, you got bargaining chips to bring people in, not just to be a wrestling coach. They got right. another job where they can make a living and they can travel. Yeah. Yep. Do yep. their thing that yeah that that I mean that's the ideal why yeah why wouldn't you jump at that if you were right, a, right. like a post grad and they got they got everything right there for them man you got tracks you got you got weights you got pools you got uh, we got an incredible cafeteria right you know that's probably one of the biggest cafeterias Have you seen that cafeteria yeah I mean it's an incredible cafeteria right there and so we got um, you know just a recovery system recovery program so it's it's got everything man. I'm, they're I'm used believe. to running events, like you said, events. I, don't they host? They've hosted the Big Ten track and field yeah. before, or something. Yeah. I mean, so they're used to. Yeah. It's not like they're just going to start running events. Right. They, they exactly they ran events before. Yeah, they have. Yep, and, and they want to do more. I mean, these guys are so, so motivated to to create something that's never been done before, right? And so yeah, they they've done events, and so they know what they're doing, and they don't know wrestling though. That's that's the thing. They don't know wrestling, man. So I'm bringing I'm bringing that to to them, and. Uh, it's really cool. I've got uh, I got the guys from Dolomer coming out next week to uh, to help build this build this wrestling room. So we're we're pumped about what we're gonna do. And, uh, awesome, Coach. We're on overtime right now. Do you got a little already, more time? That's for already it? an hour. Oh, yeah, we're on overtime. You got to tell me what you're comfortable with. Are you good for a little more time? I'm good, man. It's, it's not even okay. nine o'clock yet, is it? Is it nine? That's the missus. It's nine o four. It is, uh, 904. Okay. I know you got that NBA game, but um, you got to tell yet. me, are you cool with another question or two? Yeah, I'm good. Absolutely. I'm okay. Good. Absolutely. Okay. So here's the million dollar question for me. And I just, I just had Logan Stever on Sunday. Jared had an event where Logan was the, the clinician to it. And, and yeah. Logan Stever talked about how he won the world championships. Well, I talked about it and then he piggybacked, but right. you know, he won the, the world championships in 2016. He's a four time NCAA champ. Like yeah. you, he's a four time state champion. We yeah. were 155 and zero and one in high school. Who was the tie, by the way? Um, it was like Mike Sheets and high school, right? It was Mike Sheets. Was it Mike, Mike Sheets? Sheets? Mike Sheets. You tied, huh? He didn't get on top and try and turn you like a top. No, no, no. He just, he just, he, he was so slippery. He just kept reversing me. I took him down. He reversed me. Take him down. Reverse me. And that's that was before it was in a dual meet, and I was wrestling up a weight just to wrestle him. Right? I, I was really a four one forty one pound. He was one forty eight. So I went up to wrestle when we wrestled their, when we dueled their team, and um, that's when when. And dual meets, if there was a tie, both both teams got two points, and it, there was no overtime. It was overtime in, uh, in, in, in the tournaments, but not in the dual meets. And so, yeah, we tied my senior year in college, senior year in high school. And then yep. we wrestled. You tied your senior year? <laughs> yeah. I oh, my, my senior year. Not lose, like though. it was some bum, though. I didn't it was lose. Mike Sheets. I didn't, right, right, right. <laughs> then we wrestled, we wrestled, and then we wrestled a tournament two weeks after that duel, and then I beat him in the tournament, right? And uh, so, yeah, yeah. How about this? But then, it was so cool because after that, I remember Tommy Chesma coming up to me and uh, like later on, and he, he said, uh, he said, uh, once I committed to Oklahoma State, he said, you know, we got, we got Mike Sheets coming too. So I was so pumped up and I was so happy because I get to, 
I got to beat that dude for the next five years. <laughs> hey, his kid was a 33 seed backup fill-in and oh, yeah, placed in the NCAAs this year. How about that, Wyatt? That. Wyatt, yeah, Wyatt was on fire. Man. It was yeah, so, so cool yeah. to watch that dude make it. And uh, and, and yeah, because I've been knowing him kids since they're little boys. But yeah, and then of course he was he, Quincy Rouson, Quincy Rouson last year, and so they got the Rouson. That was cool. That's pretty crazy. So yeah, yeah. Is but, Mike uh, from yeah, UConn? Was good. Is Mike from UConn? Mike is no, he's from Tahlequah. Because he went to Yukon. I think Wyatt went to Yukon though, didn't he? No, no. no he, he went go? to they they live in uh uh I keep forgetting the name. They 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 live Mike's practice is in it's not Tahlequah. It's like uh another little town right outside of Tahlequah. Like um yeah, I forget the name of the town. There's a little just a little town in Oklahoma though. Little town in Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And there, it's is it the same place? Did he go to high school where Mike went to high school? No, no, he no, didn't. he went to a different school. Yeah, yeah, he goes. They go to a different school. It's a different town. I can't, okay. I can't remember. I thought Wyatt went to UConn. No, he no, didn't. No, he did. Okay, my he million did. dollar question. And Logan Steber and I talked about this. And you are going to be able to. And when I say people, guys like you and Logan Steber and Jordan Burroughs and Terval yep. Delagnev and these multiple time yep. world medalists, these world champions, these Olympic champions. He said it. You can tell me whether you feel this way or not, but he, Logan was like, nothing's ever enough. You can win the Tbilisi. You can win the world. You can win the Olympics, but you know, you can do what Burroughs did and you win the 2012 Olympics, but you, then you come back and you don't win 2016. You don't medal. Then you come back and win a world title, win another world medal. He said, nothing's just, you're never going to be happy. His point Nothing was, it's on to the next. Out. His point was like, on to the next, on to the next. You're right. You win yeah, on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. But that, nothing's that was ever enough point. because you just can't win everything. You won everything. Yeah, yeah. Was, no, were you ever I don't agree. truly satisfied? Right. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I, I think there's enough, yeah. I, I, I clearly had enough. I, I, was, I was good. I was good with my career after 96. And um, I probably, it, you know, it, it, even though, I took I took off night after ninety two Olympic Games. I took some time off, and I'm looking back, I probably I, I don't know if I wish I I, I probably wanted to stay in. I, I should have stayed in a little bit, and uh, and not take those years off. I'd been better in ninety six, but no, I, I think I think I had enough, man. After ninety six, I had enough, and I think you do have it. I think you do get enough. Now, if you don't win that Olympic gold medal, then you may have some. If I would have won that, then I may have still been well. You know, I might had some some thoughts about, you know, staying in the sport. But once you win that one, the big one, then uh, you're pretty, pretty, pretty satisfied with it. You know, now it's just about repeating. Now, after I won the first one, I wanted to win the next two. I did, you know, and I should have won 92. I mean, I was, I'm going say by a point, I really, really should have won that one. You know, that slipped away from me, but that should have been mine. But um, after 92, after 96, man, I was done. I, I didn't need another title. If you win that first one, I think, I think Burroughs, I think Burroughs, I think he wanted to, I think he wanted to get that title. He wanted to be, you know, he wanted with six, he wanted to pass John. That was his really, that was his goal. He, he got on that level and he started winning and he had the chance to, to do that. That's where his goal is. And I think so that's what kind of keeps him going. He wants that, he wants that sixth title. Um, and that, uh, and, you know, and get another Olympic title, I think he wants. It. But once you get two, I think you're, I think you're pretty good. You know, I think, I think there's enough. You know, but then there's people who don't get that and had enough too, though. Mm -hmm. So I, don't, I, I think people, yeah, I oh, think people get enough. Yeah, it is. I, mean, I think people, I think people, you know, they get enough. You know, I think John was after '92. John was done. He didn't want. He didn't want to wrestle anymore. He was, I he was think good. what George. What, okay, so what I think Logan's point was, and Jared said it. I think it was so on to the next one, on to the next. Yeah. One. Although it's the World Cup. Now it's the Pan Ams. Now it's the I think it just, I think it, it, Now it, it it's just, the it depends, on, it depends on where your goals are, man. We didn't, I didn't want to just win one title. I wanted to win multiple titles, right? I did I did want to do that. I wanted to be my my thing is I wanted to be in the conversation when, when they start talking about who's the best ever, who's the greatest ever. I wanted to be in that conversation. Right? I wanted to be I wanted to be one one I wanted to be in that conversation. So that was my goal. Um to be the best in the world and um but yeah once you once you win that big one man then then that's that's the ultimate in the game right that's the ultimate in the game he didn't get that one right he got that first one he got that world title but he never really got he didn't get he didn't win all the tournaments 
right? And so maybe he still got a little, you know, maybe that's how he feels. Um, but once you get that big one, man, it's, I think you, you can, you can live with that one. I think he's good with his, no, he's he, like, his point to me was like the constant preparation. Yeah. The constant having to make weight. The constant yeah. peaking, peaking. Right. Yeah. At his point, he, he started at eight years old. Yeah. And he's like, I've been doing it. I did it for 20 I did years too. at a professional I did too, level. Man. I did. I started at six, right? I started at six, you know, you're right. And it's, you're right. You're a professional athlete. You're, it's a profession, you know, just like LeBron James who is the next one, right? right. You're a professional athlete. Once you know, and that's what it is. And so uh, you, you go until your body says, you know, you, you don't want to get up and train anymore. Right. And it's different. It's a different, it's a different cutoff for, for different people, different people. You know? so that the Brandon next Slate. I, remember, I remember having a conversation with Brandon Slate back when he, after he won, right. And he was contemplating on coming back to compete. I had the same conversation with Jamil Kelly. Those guys, you know, they, they hit that spot. He won, right? And then he was, he, was, he was thinking about coming back. He didn't know if he wanted to come back. He was kind of done training. And, and uh, I'm like, man, if, if that fire isn't burning, then yeah, right. it's over. Right. Yeah. That, that fire has got to stay burning, man. If that fire is not burning, then yeah, it's, it's, you're going you, to take some bad losses. It's time to go, right? He did, and he just didn't have it. You know, I, and, and so when I won, I wanted to, I was, I was so hot about coming back, man. That fire was lit because I wanted, I wanted to prove it wasn't a fluke. I wanted, I wanted to be a legend in the game. Right. And so this is different, you know, different um, goals for different people. Right. It really, it really is. Everybody's different. Everybody's different, but yeah, it's, it's a profession, man. It was a, I was just telling a kid the other day, like this is, especially now it's more of a, a profession now than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. And you got to treat it like a profession. You got to be a professional. And so it is on to the next one. I don't know who is telling you that you're not in the conversation for greatest, but you're. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's. For the greatest no every time. No, no one's. Even if they did say that, I wouldn't believe them. I know I'm in that conversation. You're in my conversation every time. I want you to know that. I, let's I, just I've not get it twisted. You're in the conversation. Let's just. One thing I, the one thing I love about my career, man, I've wrestled some of the best ever. I've wrestled some of the best guys in the sport, in the sport. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. I got to wrestle Dave. I got to wrestle for Zayev, for Ryan. I didn't get to wrestle Kent, man. That, that hurt. I really wanted to wrestle Lee. And, um, and I, was a, I was a match away from wrestling him at the 84 trials. I ruined the beating, but at least I got to wrestle him. I got to work out with him, though. He came to the, he came to the training camp in 88. So I got to work out with Lee a little bit. And uh, I got the best of him, so I felt good about that. <laughs> well, I got to obviously, you know, Olympics a couple weeks away. Yeah. You know, how, how are you going to watch it? You know, what are the emotions you feel watching it? Right. You've been involved in the sport your yeah. whole life. You know, like we just said, legend, you know, top, top of the game. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. You know when you I'm so it, fired up, I'm not, you... I'm not, I'm not only fired up about this Olympic games. Mm -hmm. I'm fired up about this team, man. We, we got some superstars on this team. Man. We got some guys that, that are legends. They're going to be legends have been, in the sport all their life. And I, I remember watching David Taylor when he was at Tulsa National, he was 10 years old, right? And so I've been watching these guys all of their lives compete, right? And I remember telling those guys about, telling, talking to David's dad about, you know, uh, about the journey, you know, and how to stay in and how to, you know, keep the kids, you know, motivated and keep them, keep them having fun and keep them competing. And so I remember having those conversations with, with those parents. And so now I get to watch those guys, you know, go for the ultimate, ultimate prize and, uh, and, and they can win. I mean, I'll, every, every one of those, every one of those guys on that team can win. And that's, that's a true statement. Everyone can win. Those guys, I mean, from Gilman to, to Gable, those guys, if they have a hot tournament, those guys can win. They really can. And, um, but I'm broken hearted. And of course I'm, I'm broken hearted. Every time I, I turn on a game and talk about Olympics, I'm broken hearted because my guy, Jordan is not there and he, he worked his butt off, man. And, and we did some great work and um, he, he earned his, he earned his way and uh, came up a point short from, from qualifying the weight class, which was, was just heartbreaking. And so uh, I feel bad for that, of course. And um, wish he wish right now, I wish I was in Tokyo, I'm not talking to you guys. I wish I was in Tokyo getting ready for the games, getting ready to put him on the mat. And uh, cause he's done some incredible work, man. And, Really paid the price to to have the opportunity to win to to be there, and uh, just unfortunate he didn't he didn't get to do it. So that's that's part of part of it. But now I'm I'm pumped up. I'm I'm excited about the women's team, man. I think we got one of the best women women's teams ever, 
and we can we can get multiple gold medals on that women's team, man. From Sarah to to Ali, man, those those girls are wrestling their butt off, right? And they're fun to watch. I mean, they're fun. I mean, Misha, they're fun to watch. And each each one of them, to, I mean, Jakara, man, she she's a beast. Yeah, so I'm excited to watch this whole team compete, man. And I think we're gonna I think we're gonna do well. I really do. So I don't know where I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna probably be here somewhere. I got a big 80 inch TV. I'm gonna watch the NBA game, and I'll probably just park it right here and and watch it. But um, now it's gonna be. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm I'm excited for them. I'm excited. Coach, when you bring up legends, you know, and we talk about legendary things. I, I had a friend text me the other day. Kevin Roberts is like, hey, what's the most iconic photo of wrestling? And we started yeah. trading. Right, right. And we traded the Gable one. We traded the yeah. Kendall. Kendall celebrating yeah. one from 96. Yeah. yeah. And then he sent, I think one of us sent it. It was you on Dave Schultz's shoulder. Right. Right. Was that in 88 in Seoul after you that won? That was in 88. Yep. That was in 88. And you had. You had beat him to get on the team, right? And then yes. he cornered you. Right. That to me, that took it for me. I was like, <laughs> you have your, your most iconic. Right. There is your most iconic wrestling photo. Right. Talk about right. that iconic moment that, that that in your life and, and what all went into that moment. You Dave Schultz hoisting you on his shoulders after the 88 Olympic gold medal. Yeah, man. That, that was that was really um, you're right, man. That was a moment in life. And I, I've always said life is all about moments. And that was, that was one of the, the most um, amazing moments of my life uh, to win. And, and it's funny because Dave wasn't even, he wasn't even scheduled to be in my corner for the finals. He came up and he asked D D Douglas to ask me if he could sit in my corner for the finals, maybe like two hours, maybe an hour before the match. Right. And so, you know, and, uh, but Dave was so, and, and I wouldn't have, if he wouldn't have been so gracious, man, he was so gracious after I beat him and he, he kind of gave it up and uh, came to training camp. And like, you know, if I needed a, a drink of water, if I needed some tape, if I needed whatever I needed, Dave was running to get it. Right. And so he was really, um, really good to, to be around and uh, wasn't like he was coaching me or anything like that. We would we wrestled a little bit during the, during the training camp, but he was just, he was so uh, selfless to, 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 to do whatever he could to, to help the team. And I wasn't the only one. I mean, he would help anybody that was on the team if they needed help. So he was really good to be around. And then, so it was funny. He came up to me before the tournament started. And uh, I think we were getting ready to weigh in. And he had went over, you know, he was a big Russian guy. He loved the Russians. They loved him. And so he went over and he had spent some time in the Russian camp, right? He's over there talking to those guys. And he came, he comes back and he goes, Monday. He goes, man. They're uh, they're all going, man. Monday, Monday's no problem. Why come you're not on the team, Dave? Why? They were they're, they're really surprised that Dave wasn't on the team because you know, he's on the team the year before. He lost to arrived in the finals and, and lost by a point the year before, you know. And Dave had pinned everybody in the U.S. Open the year before, right? So he wasn't like he was declining. Yeah, he was still he was still very good. And so, but the Russians were like, Dave, why come you're not on the team? And you should be on the team. And you know, Monday, you know, Monday, you know, he's, he's no problem. He's no problem. And so Dave came back and told me that. And dude, don't you know, I was so freaking fired up. Oh, you need to hear that. Just, I was already fired up. I was, I was fired up on, on, on a few different levels, right? That was just another level that, 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 that inspired me to, to, to have a heck of a tournament, right? So I was pissed off that they would even think that. And Dave was, and Dave was like, no, dude, dude, Monday, Monday, Monday kicked my butt. Now he, he wasn't, wasn't, no, it wasn't a fluke. You know, he, he beat me. And so he told those guys that, but they didn't believe it. They still didn't believe it. They believed it afterwards. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they, were, they were true believers after <laughs> afterwards, though, right? Right, right, right. They That's crazy. It. That's awesome. Yeah. And Coach Monday, you are our first freestyle Olympic African-American gold medalist. That's correct, right? Yep, the first first black Olympic champion from all continents. First black Olympic. All, all not only that, period. Yeah, yeah, period. First black man. First black man to ever win. You were the first man, man person of color. First yep. uh, person yep. person from Africa yep. essentially. Yep. First person of color. Yeah. Of African How descent to, to win an Olympic gold medal in, in I'm the first. I'm the first. That's what I was saying. I love being the That's first. That's amazing. <laughs> right. I yeah. knew you were I the first. I knew you were the first, but I didn't know it was. Yeah. The whole yeah. spectrum. The whole spectrum. The whole spectrum. All it's country. funny because like 
All those That's guys. Amazing. I had a guy in my weight class from Nigeria, and uh, he came up. And matter of fact, his name was Monday, <laughs> but he came up and he was talking. They were so excited after I won. They were so pumped. Uh, the kids, the guys from the African countries, were so so pumped that I won. Because they, they knew, right? And Douglas is the one that really kind of brought it to my attention. Bobby Douglas, you know, was my Olympic coach, and he really he was the one that kind of brought it to me. And I knew it because. You know, deep down, I knew it because I, I mean, I followed, I followed all the guys. I followed Lee Kemp. Lee Kemp probably should have been the first because he'd have won in 1980. They boycotted, but they, he he was a world champion in 81. So he was three time world champ. Right, right. So he probably would have been the first if they hadn't boycotted. So I knew Lee's story. I knew Chris Campbell. I followed Chris Campbell, uh, Lloyd Kaiser. I followed him, Jimmy, you know, Carr. So I followed these, I'm Douglas. I followed these guys, but it just didn't dawn on me that it hadn't been a black country champion. And so Douglas came up to me, and uh, it was probably about a couple months out. And he goes, "And you know, if you if you if you win, you, you can be the first. And so, man, that just that just sent chills to my body, man. At first, I was a little nervous about it, but then the more I thought about it, then the more it just inspired me. It was more of a, it was more of a motivator. So I didn't want to. I wasn't. It wasn't that kind of pressure, like, oh man, that's the pressure to be the first. It was like, man, if I got the opportunity. I've got the opportunity to be the first. And that's what I'm asking for. You can't never take that away from me. That's amazing. Can't never take that away. That is amazing, right? Coach. Yeah. That is an unbelievable. Is that, would you say that's your, is that your proudest wrestling accomplishment? Gold medal aside, being the first Absolutely. to ever do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love for it. For sure. I for love sure. it. I love it that you're an American, too. That's what right. I, yeah, exactly. I love that, too. I, I it's, right. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, was that is awesome. I, I'm on the shoulders of greatness, but I, I'm on the show. I tell everybody, my story that I was exposed to greatness early as a kid. And I, I got to see that, that 72 team. And I was always going down to the, the U S Federation. That was a Stillwater. I got to watch those uh, great Oklahoma state teams when they had uh, uh, Fujita and Yutaki, those, those Japanese guys that Myron Roderick had. And I was around Myron Roderick a lot, you know? So I was, I was exposed to greatness early, man. So it was really that seed was set in the early, and I wanted to be great because it was because the greatest that came before me, you know, Wayne Wells. I mean, he's an Oklahoma guy, the big champ. And I'll tell you this story, man. There was a guy, his name was Frank Lewis. He won an Olympic gold medal in 1936. 1936, out of Stillwater, of Oklahoma. Oklahoma State grad, look him up, Frank Lewis. He told me a story that they, they took a ship to Berlin in 1936. Yes. Take a big like a freaking boat. ship. Take yeah, a... take a boat. Take a boat to Berlin. Oh. And he was, and he, he said he got up one day and he went out on the on the deck. He was going to eat breakfast. And there was Jess Yohan sitting over at the table. No way. Yes. Yeah. So he went oh. and, and, and met Jess Yohan's man and he had to talk to him. And so check this out. So as I was training for to make the Olympic team, Frank was living in Stillwater. Frank Lewis is living in Stillwater. He's, he's a Stillwater guy. He would come to practice, man. He would he would sit up there and he'd watch practice. And he and after practice, he'd, he'd come over and show me a couple of little things, show me a little key lock shitty, the old school moves he'd show me. And I just listened to him. I just listened to the stories, man. And that was another, another inspiration. Frank Lewis was in the in the room. And I, and I tell him every day, Frank, I just want to be like you, man. I want to be like you. Dude. I want to be, I want to be a gold medalist like you. Well, you can do it, Monday. You can do it. You got to do this. You gotta, you gotta do this. So he would he would give me tidbits, you know, every day. He'd come in the room and watch his practice. Wow. So that was fun. Unreal. When you bring up oh. Jesse Owens, I'm just gonna tell you, my mind, <laughs> my most iconic Olympic moment ever, ever photo is the German, I think is in bronze, Japanese right. guy might be silver. Right. They're doing the Heil Hitler salute. And Jesse Owens is not having any of it. Right, it's the right. most ultimate. It is what it is to me for me to be an American. Like yeah. we're gonna be defiant of whatever you're trying to do here. Right. Adolf right. Hitler, the biggest like F you we could have ever given that guy. Yeah, you can and you're it, not gonna outrun me. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not gonna outrun right. me. I'm gonna win, right. I'm gonna win four little right. gold medals. Exactly. I'm gonna wax all your guys right. who you think are a perfect race. Right. I'm gonna right. dust them, I'm gonna make exactly. them look bad, and we're gonna be defiant. In your own stadium, in your own town, I'm not gonna. I'm, we're not gonna bow down to you. And I, then, to me, 
that is by far the most iconic. Right. You know what I'm talking about? The, the post yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The guy doing a high Hitler, and then yep. you got Jesse yep. Owens is yep. standing in his crown. I think that that's what it is to be an American. I, I think that's the true yeah. American spirit. Right, right, right. Now that's uh, you're right, man. You said it. You said it right, and that uh, it's a motivator, man. I, I look back on it now, and it's like those, those kind of those kind of things were very inspirational. And as I was coming up. I looked at those images. I watched them. I, I read the stories. I read the books, and so it was always an inspiration um, coming up for sure. And, and the Russians—they they act the same way, man. They—they they think they are just the, the master race. They think, and and not to be like racist or anything like that. But they just think they're better. They just think they're better people, right? They, they just think Americans are are lazy and eat ice cream, and and they're kind of like the, the Rocky thing, right? It's the yeah. same deal. That's that's yeah. how they think. <laughs> And so I always got a, a chip on my shoulder about Russians. They they're like the Drago. They like Drago, right? They think they're just a, they, they think they're better, and they are. You had to you had to <laughs> put it on them a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But you, you wonder why those too. guys are so good, man. Why do you think the Russians are so good? What's your what's, what's your a, opinion? A, about? Are you asking me? Yeah. Why do they? Why are they? So my, good? my opinion. Why they're so good? Well, you got to watch the NBA game. We don't have this much time, man. But my 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 honest opinion is, my honest opinion is, I believe they will win at all costs. It does. I think they have a superior system. I think their system's better than ours. They're not muddled down by folk style. Right. That I think that that hurts us. And I think they have a superior system that they've created. That they they learned a lot of the stuff from us. But then they created another system where how do you have the the, the body kinetics the uh, acrobatics and then i think that they will do anything to win they will win at all costs. they'll win at all costing that's, that's, think that's they will win at all costs that's that that really? changed it i mean with the, really? the icarus movie you, you watch those things that, yeah. that they're doing behind the scenes it, it right you know how, what it is it, I, those coach, little, I think that they those little things they don't understand they why we won't do those things they don't understand like why wouldn't you give yourself the best advantage to win right I think, right. uh, but coach, you know more than I do about it. You you forgot yeah. last, the last five minutes that I know more about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just telling you what I've seen. They right. got a really good system. They'll win at all costs, whatever it takes. And they're way more selective with it. We've got a broader. We're doing we're doing a different sport essentially. We're raising our kids in a different sport. Yeah, yeah. For sure. not, my kids don't know what freestyle wrestling is. Right, they, right. They, they, right. They line up on the bottom. way out. Right. That's that's their way out. Right. That, the, the, yeah. It's yeah, it compared to it us, right? We got other it opportunities. It was for a long time. Those guys, have, they got money now. Yeah. Those guys, they are living well. <laughs> it's a different system now than when we came up. Right. They were, they were like really poor. We're coming up. And so, like, yeah, they, they take care of their athletes. I mean, it's government sponsored. I mean, those, mm -hmm. if you win a gold medal, you get a check for the rest of your life. You get a check every month for the rest of your life. You win a little gold medal in Russia. So they take care okay, of it. Right. They, so they're hungry. I mean, they're hungry for they that. Right? that that's, that's what they want, right? They get, but what they get, feeds they all that? Bigger all that fed by organized crime. Is all that not fed by organized crime? Didn't they have to do a lot of it? It's all, a lot of it's fed it by was, organized crime and industry. Well, it, it was for a long time, but now it's not, it's not oh, so much anymore. I mean, they, they still have like, a lot of them is just, they, they run those distilleries, right? So they, they're selling a lot of vodka. And, um, but not so much There's anymore because now, now they're open. They're, like, they're open business, right? So they, they're running businesses. I don't know, you know, how legit it is, but a lot of it is just a lot of it is legit business now, right? Because now, what's your business. take? Why? What's your take? If, well, I think I think I they have, they, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I think I think they've got a, a better reward system. I think it's more generational. I think it's it means more to them. Um, they're they're you know they're um, they're seen in a different light. By, by the country, by the government, right? So they, they're supported more. Uh, I think, they, I think I like our system. I just, I just think the folks that, I, I, I'm a product of our system. You know, from the time I grew up, I had great, great programs growing up, great coaches, great competition. The, the kid programs were good. My high school was good. Uh, my college was good. And then my post-college was good. Right. I mean, I, I think I'm a product of the system. Now, the only thing that, that, that made me fall behind is, is, is the folk style because I had to catch up. I didn't have the opportunities to, to go to cadet worlds and all that. I, I didn't have those. I didn't have those coaches like, like, like that growing up. 
So that's the only thing that, that kind of held me back. But I like our system. I like our system. It's just that we're going, we're, we're in two different sports. We, we're, yeah. we're going back and forth and it holds yeah. us back. Yeah. Right? And, but you look big, at the guys. That's the biggest thing that hurts us, in my opinion. I, the I'm biggest just, thing, that and the support. We 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 don't we don't we, we don't we don't have that support. And for the longest time, wrestling was not about business. It was just like a poor man's sport. You know, you just kind of go show up, and everybody helps each other out. Good old boy network, good old boy system. But it really wasn't about business, right? And so so now it's getting more more of a business model. Guys are making more money. Guys can run. You can run. I can run a club right now and make a living. Right. I can run a wrestling club right now and, and, and the, 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 that'd be my business, right? Like Perler's doing, like Young Guns are doing, like Bormat did, like Izzy's doing. You can run a, you can run a business through wrestling because now people and parents are more, uh, I mean, they're open, they're open to, to, to spending that money, right? And I tell these kids now, even like in this program Aspire, I say, well, either when you pay now, you're going to pay later because these kids are they're more valuable. It's more building that value uh, for school, right? And so people are more open to spend that money to help, you know, Johnny uh, be the well, best that he can be. If he wants to be good, right? It's their yeah, it's an investment. The biggest absolutely. investment is, is their kid, right? That's absolutely. So now they're willing to do that when they wasn't willing to do that back. And I remember when I first when I first came back to Tulsa after '92, I opened a club, right? This is in Tulsa. I started, I had to open a club. I had a wrestling room and I was kind of running like a karate school, right? You sign up, you pay. And so I was getting backlash. People was like, oh, Monday, yeah, Monday's trying to make money off of wrestling. He's trying to make money off of wrestling, right? Because the concept just wasn't there. They wasn't, they wasn't thinking that way. This was in the 90s, right? And the only one that was really doing it was, was my guy up in New Jersey. Um, um, Ernie? Ernie, Monaco, they were yeah. really the only one in the game that was kind of doing that, yeah. right? And so, you know, I'm like, and people were like, I had a backlash. I mean, they, they, they didn't want to send their kid. I'm like, dude, this is what we got to do, right? This is this is a new thing. So yeah, I had a little backlash about it back then. And so, but now it's different. And now people see it, see the, see yeah, it's different. up to the rest of the, and the like sports, right? And right? it, and, and it helps our kids. It forever, right? Our kids are coming up now, man. And, and so, because I, I see it all the time. Kids come, they get out of high school, they get to college, they got so many bad habits because the, they don't have the, the proper coaching, right? They don't have they don't have great coaching. So they had, so you got to kind of strip these kids down from all those bad habits and then reteach them. Nowadays, you get these kids that are coming out of these programs, out of these clubs, you don't have to break them down. I mean, you can just add, add to what they're doing. These kids can wrestle and they're ready to come in and win. You look at, you know, these young kids like, they're coming in and they're they're winning the NCAA titles as freshmen, and, you know, because they Yaka they've Mahalas. had great coaching. Yes, yes, Yakub Mahal is they, 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 you know? They've had great coaching coming up. So yes, so now it's it's, it's revolutionized the sport of wrestling. So now we got better yes. kids coming up. Hey, coach, coach Monday, yep. sixty six thousand five hundred dollars to board and go to Blair Academy. That's Blair, Blair Academy. Uh, Sixty-six thousand five hundred dollars to board. That's a big program. board. Yeah. That's that's room board and tuition. Yeah, yeah. And then they don't, and they got a waiting list. It's crazy. They got, a, they got a waiting list. There you go. So I mean, that says it right there. People are willing to pay. Are. to do what it Absolutely. takes. And I'm guessing you guys are not going to be sixty-six five. Would be my guess. It's Fire be, Academy. No, it's not that much, but it's uh, it's not um. It's, it's, uh, I think it's like, it's around 45, 40, it's, it's not 66, five. No, it's not 66, five. And then we it's got, we got, that's not, it's not 66, five. Maybe, we're gonna, we maybe, not 66 maybe, maybe, five. Let's maybe just get that years. out of the way. Maybe, maybe in a few years. Once, that's my competition. Once Monday builds that's, it up. that's part of my spill. That's going to be part of my, that's going to be part of my recruiting, uh, platform right there. Is so you can go to Blair, but you can come to Spire. 66 five. Two for one. Right, right, right. right. 66 five. Right. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I was competing with those guys when I was a Bishop Lynch. We lost, I was second behind those guys three years in a row in prep nationals behind Bishop, behind uh, Blair Academy. And really one year, we should have got them. Should have got them one year. And so I'm back on that track, man. I'm back. I'm back. I'm chasing those it. guys. 
Taste those I guys. love it, Coach. Yeah, we got Coach. We, we got this. Yeah, we got this game. We got, we got progress from everybody, man. It, just go to uh, you know spireinstitute.com and, and, and check it out. And uh, but yeah, we got progress for everybody, man. We 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 won't turn anybody down. We try not awesome. to. Awesome. Jared, do you got anything else for Coach Monday? Because he's got an NBA final game. Right. What game first are we quarter. in, Coach? Still first quarter. I think uh, Phoenix is up by seven, 18 11. So we're good. What's uh, the score? Is it 3 2 Milwaukee? 3 2 Milwaukee, man. The Bucks are up. So Phoenix has got to win tonight. Giannis, have, the Greek freak. I don't have anything else, Coach. Thanks for your time. What do you guys, what did you, what did you think about, what did you think about, uh, about, Chikara, the, the track girl that got kicked out for more marijuana. What do you guys think about you that? You don't want my opinion. You don't want my opinion. <laughs> I want to beat Jamaica so bad. Right. You should never was, not win the 100 be, meters. Dude, the 100 meters should race. live here. Right. Oh, uh, dude, that was going to be a race, dude. That chick, that that, that uh, Jamaican girl, is, I forget her name, but she is really freaking good. Our girl, huh? Richardson, was going to put it on her. Hold on. What? Stop. Stop. Richardson was going to put it on her. You heard it here first. Because, yeah. listen, now you're going to you're gonna see in the world championships, unless that Jamaican lady uh, retires, Richardson will put it on her. Richardson's yeah. her top end. Have you yeah. seen her top she, end? She can fly, dude. Her top end is unreal. She She's a slow starter in that first 50 meters. She can fly, her top dude. end is insane. She, and listen, and the reason I brought that up, I just saw in the commercial. I just saw her on the commercial. That's really the reason I brought it up. So I'm glad that they're doing commercials for it. But yeah, that was, See, I'm that was a big a fan. Break. That was a hard I'm break. a big fan of her. I, that yeah. really disappointed me because yeah, that was tough. Um, if we're talking about marijuana, first off, she's going to make a million dollars in the marijuana edible. She's going to make <laughs> a lot of marijuana. No, she is. You know she is. Stop it. You know she's going to make a bunch of money in the marijuana industry. I'm not, Get a, off big fan. I'm not, I'm not a big fan anymore. I'm not a big fan. I'm a big fan of hers. I just want to beat Jamaica so bad you right. I can take I'm not a big fan of the marijuana. <laughs> I know, but I, I think she's gonna come out in the end. Um she'll be back yeah. for 20 yeah, she'll be she'll back win the world title. She'll be back. I can't she's wait to gonna see. She's gonna win it. Jared, are we done with him? We good with him. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, coach. I appreciate, man, I appreciate you guys, man.